Uh, thanks, Tim. Um, it's a real pleasure to be here, and uh, as, uh, thank you, Peter, also for the introduction. Um, it, it was a complete quirk of fate that my previous job in head office was to head up our global partnerships and sponsorships programs, uh, and then to find myself uh, two months before the Sydney Games taking place to be uh, to move here as, as managing director of our business. So. Um, brilliant to be on the receiving end and see it come to life, as you've seen there from Tim. I think um, I've just got a few slides, and I, that's what the thing I want to mostly mention, really, is, and this is the title of my, my, my point here, really, is um, this is more than just a sports sponsorship. I've been lucky enough to be involved in many sports sponsorships, um, whether it be Wimbledon Tennis or Motorsport or America's Cup Sailing, Rugby World Cup and things like that. Um, this was something different for us. Um, and we, uh, earlier there was conversations around short-term or long-term. This was very much deep within our business. It was long-term. Um, Prince Harry and his team came to see us about six months before the London Games and said, we got this idea, as, as Tim said, about the, from the Warrior Games, but we need some help and we need some backing, um, otherwise we can't make it happen. And Land Rover in particular has got a long history with military, with supplied militaries around the world with vehicles. So there was a real deep relevance. But fundamentally, um, it was about creating something where um, we could also involve our business into the center of it. And um, key for us, uh, press the right button here. Oh, that's uh, failed at the first level there. Let's try that. There we go. Um, key for us here was to embed it into our business in many ways um, that would have legacy. Um, and you can see here when we're talking about how we, um, how we involve um, ex-service personnel and actually employment in our business. One of the things that um, we've grown very fast uh, as a business, but we really lack recruitment of engineering skills, of leadership skills. Um, and therefore, how could we not just look at the men and women that were uh, wounded, injured, or sick from serving, but also lots of men and women that leave the armed forces every year um, and find themselves in civilian street um, trying to build a career uh, after their service. So that was really key to us to try and build a program of employment in our business. How could we also then get our, our employees themselves competing, those that had served in the games themselves? How could we build pride and motivation within our internal team to feel part of a company that um, was investing in this sorts of activity? And then actually, uh, as we led into the Sydney Games, and I'll touch on this a bit later, um, we are investing huge amounts, as other car companies are, in autonomous driving and mobility. How can we actually work with some of these men and women that have these horrendous disabilities to see how technology can help um, bring mobility and independence to their lives through autonomous driving? And that technology is here now, um, um, but is a core part of our, our business going forward. So making that connection was really important. So just touching very briefly, um, we have actually, I won't read everything on the chart here, you can read it, but we've actually now recruited more than 1,000 uh, men and women into our business from the armed forces. We signed a covenant uh, in 2014 uh, to make this a key priority for us. And globally now we have 1,000 people now with, we've recruited directly through those channels. And since 2015, we've got, um, we had 30 people that were um, wounded, injured or sick from serving um, um, that went on a program with us about inspiring tomorrow's workforce. And now 75% of those people are working within our business um, in various departments, whether it be engineering or marketing, sales, service, finance, um, across our business um, completely. And not only that, after the, uh, the Invictus Games in Orlando, we've now had a program to recruit um, ex-military people into our dealerships across the country. So where we don't have manufacturing in America, we do have uh, many dealerships that need technicians, service advisors, um, front-end staff, salespeople. Um, we now have 180 people that we recruited through the, um, the American um, services into, into our businesses in there. And on the back of um, the Sydney Games in 2018, we've now started a program to do exactly the same here in Australia. And we're working with a fantastic organization called Ironside, who are helping us now write training programs and plans and pathways to get um, servicemen and women in Australia working in our, in our businesses around, around Australia. Um, There's also some fantastic stories, um, personal stories, which I, I haven't got time to go into now, but involving our, our own people um, in uh, recruitment. We've had eight of our own people employed in the business competing in the games um, and to follow their journeys and create that uh, direct contact into the rest of our organization as they compete to make it real and live has been has really, really important. And then we had also, um, it was the previous slide actually, but um, loads of pledges and devices where our employees can back um, those people competing. 
And the last slide here, um, which, which you can see, um, goes back to my earlier point about um, how do we actually make the relevance of our technology and our business to connect with um, people that have these disabilities. And these aren't just people that have served in the military. There are obviously lots of people that, through various reasons, have find themselves immobile with disabilities. And I think actually the industry is on the cusp of creating some fantastic technology where true autonomous driving, which we call level four, which exists today, um, we just need the legislative infrastructure and technology to make it happen in real life, um, where the men and women that previously have not been able to be that mobile can then be mobile through this technology uh, in, in true autonomous driven vehicles. So that's a huge amount of our investment every year is going into that future. Um, I think, uh, I, I, Although half of my background uh, in my career has been pure marketing, um, I didn't actually want to go into too much of that in this session because um, in, the, in the sense of the future of brands and what brands can do, um, yes, we had a campaign and we had a manifesto and we, and we had some assets that sort of tried to connect our values with the Invictus games. But um, for us, it was more about um, investing in the long term as presenting partner in something that we felt deeply about, something that was going to help improve our business through recruitment, something where we could apply our technology know-how to help people's outcomes. Um, and so I would categorize it more of a CSR type investment. Um, we rarely big bring the brands of Jaguar and Land Rover together, actually. Nearly all of our other sporting properties, they exist in their own channels because they're very different in personality and customers. Um, for this, it was more of a company initiative where we brought the two brands together uh, and we had a creative. And we did have some, uh, uh, some fantastic outcomes as well. That might be a little bit difficult to read, but our improvements in our um, metrics um, and our return on investment versus previous games uh, for Sydney were fantastic. You know, we really worked hard on making sure the brand was visible. It's hard working with the ABC in terms of being public broadcasting and the rules they have around branded. Um, so you had to be clever about how you got your brand to stand out. But we did that and the, the multipliers that we, you can see there versus the previous games in Toronto um, were really pleasing. And for these things to be sustainable, you do have to have a scorecard. And we, we, in every investment that we make, particularly in sponsorships and partnerships in, in sports areas, we do have a scorecard that we use. Um, I haven't put the actual figures in there for obvious reasons, but seven to one return on investment um, for us was the best we, we, we saw against all the other games. Um, normally our benchmark would be four to, f four to, f uh, to one or five to one or better than. Um, so this really performed well. We haven't got some of the brand tracking research yet. This is probably about two weeks too early as a, as a session to have that data. But we know from previous games where we've um, done the qualitative and quant research that we get up uplifts in those key measures of, um, uh, that you can see on, on, the, on the screen there. So I guess the message is, yes, there was a commercial aspect to this, you know, to, to invest many millions over the four games that we have. Um, needs to have a commercial back to it so you know that you're getting um, a return to our shareholders and our business but actually this partnership is fundamentally much more than that it was about a deep-seated uh, uh, value set that we had um, to invest in this in this wonderful cause and I've um, continued to be humbled and it's interesting seeing the film uh, that Tim showed by just the memories I have of the men and women that you talk to that have been on those journeys uh, and it's absolutely not about the winning it's about getting to the start line for, for many of those people um, and the last point to make, um, it's as much about the hidden injuries as it is about the physical injuries. You know, PTSD and those uh, mental in illnesses um, are very difficult for those people to overcome. And this inspiration and the, uh, the opportunity to compete for their country and have that as a goal uh, through their re rehabilitation was massively important for, so, for hundreds and hundreds of people. So um, that gives you a flavour. and. Uh, Onwards and upwards, we haven't yet confirmed, although we're working behind the scenes to continue our partnership with The Hague um, in two years' time. And I hope, I hope personally, even though I'm now in Australia, that it becomes something that the business supports for many years to come. Thank you.